Hi. So often I find myself needing to copy the contents of some variable that I have maybe in a Python script that I'm running, and I want to copy that into another application, be it maybe another Python script, or more often than not, maybe into like a word processor or maybe a markdown file somewhere, Excel, text file, what have you. So yes, you can certainly, you know, um, run your script or app in debug mode, and then you can do some inspection and then you can copy the contents of a variable and then go ahead and paste that wherever you want. You could even write code to actually just save files. But often all I'm doing in the work is that I've got a script that maybe produces a result. I just want to copy that result out to the clipboard so that I can easily, you know, paste it into some other document. And so for that, I use the PyperClip library. It's a very basic library that's very simple to use. It basically, you know, gives you two commands, one command to push something to the clipboard and one command to read from the clipboard. And I find that extremely useful. So that's what this video is about. So the PyperClip library can access your local clipboard. It is cross-platform. And since I also use on my Mac, a um, history, basically, kind of a little app that maintains the history of the clipboard, I can actually push multiple things from my Python script or Python app to the clipboard, and then I have access to all of those in the history. So in order to use PyperClip, uh, if you look at the GitHub repo for the, this, uh, for the blog, you'll find the notebook for it. And in there, I give a link to the PyperClip library, but basically you have to pip install it. If you're using the pip file that I have with the um, notebooks here in this repo, you can just basically install from the pip file. It has the dependency already in there. So I've already installed it in my virtual environment, so I can just import it now. So let's go ahead and try it out. It's, as you will see, very, very simple. The one thing though, is that PyperClip only works with text. So you can push text. So basically strings, integers, booleans, kind of like the really simple data types that have a simple string representation. You can push those to the clipboard and you can read those from the clipboard. You cannot push more complex objects like dictionaries or custom classes and so on. But there are ways around that and I'll show you one way of doing it in this video. So let's go ahead and just type something, let's say, Python rocks, and I need to push this to the clipboard. So I need to do the piperclip.copy method uh, function, and I'm just going to put in the string s. And that's it. That's now on my clipboard. So if you're doing this yourself, you can go ahead to another app and then paste it in wherever you want. We can also read it back. So in this case, I know what's on the clipboard. I've got that string that I just pushed. Now I can read what's on the clipboard by using the clipboard uh, from the, the paste from PyperClip, like so. So if we look at contents, you'll see it has that string in it. So it works great for that. And that's it. That's the, that's the PyperClip library. I mean, it, is, it, is, it really doesn't get any simpler than that. Now what about more complex objects? Let's start, for example, with a dictionary. So this is something that I really don't use very often, but you know, you may want to. And let's go ahead and just put in three values in this dictionary. Now you cannot push this using PyperClip. If you try and do that and put that onto the clipboard, let's go ahead and just try it. You'll see we get an exception. We get this PyperClip exception and it tells us that only strings, ints, floats and bool values can be copied to the clipboard, not a dictionary. So that's not too difficult because you could, you know, basically just do the string representation of your object. And if we look now at piperclip.paste, uh, you'll see it was the string representation of that dictionary. And that may be all you need. In some cases, though, what I do is that I may have a script that's running and it outputs some result, right? Its result is going to be maybe a dictionary or some object. And I need to read that back in to some other application, another Python app that I have that might be using it. So I could certainly write this out to a file. I could maybe push it into a database, but sometimes I don't want to you know, go to all that trouble. I just want to be able to just put it on the clipboard and then read it from the clipboard into the other app. I can't use PyperClip directly for that, but there are certain things you can do. For example, you could use maybe JSON encoding. So you could actually use the JSON module 
and go ahead and just serialize your dictionary to JSON. Now, of course, JSON serialization is kind of limited, right? You're going to have to deal with special things like date times, for example, or UUIDs and so on. But you can write your own custom serializers uh, for, for the JSON uh, dumps method that you have or dumps function that you have in the JSON module that's in the standard library. So that's one way of doing it. Another way that I tend to use is use pickling. So Python has this concept of pickling, which allows you basically to take an object and serialize it into a byte string, a binary byte string. And that works quite well, but it doesn't work well with Piperclip because Piperclip only wants to deal with text. So there are ways, however, to get around that. And let's go through this pretty quickly. There's more detail in the uh, notebook that's available on the GitHub repo, but let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to import the pickle module first. So we're going to say d pickled is equal to pickle dot, and we use the dump string function dumps, just like you have with JSON, right? You've got the JSON dump s and the JSON um, load s. You got the same thing with pickled. So we're going to dump to us from a string, and that's going to be essentially our dictionary d. So we do that, and we can just go ahead and print. What, whatever this depickled is. Let's see what it's actually. And as you can see, it's basically a byte string that contains some data. Now this is binary data. So we want to transform this into a text string that we can push onto the clipboard. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to somehow, you know, get rid of this binary information, recast it into something else. But it's very simple. We can use base64 encoding. So for that, I'm going to import the base64 module, again, part of the standard library. And I'm going to create this new variable called dbase64. And we're going to do base64, and we're going to do a b64 encode, like so. And we're going to take dpickled. So what this is going to do, it's going to basically encode this using ASCII characters. So if we look at what dbase64 is, we can see that now it is still a binary string, so we still can push that directly to the clipboard, but it's a little bit better now. We're one step closer, right? Now we have just ASCII characters in here. So the next thing we need to do is to basically transform that into a regular string. And that's pretty easy. Byte strings have a decode method that we can use. So let's go ahead and create another variable, this time called dstring, which is d base 64decode right? We take this D base 64 that we just created using 64 base 64 encoding, and we get that. And if we look at what D string is, you'll see it's just basically the string version of that thing. And now we can copy that to the clipboard. So we can say piperclip.copy, and we'll copy now that string. Now that works. Now we can read it back. We can say content is equal to piperclip.paste. And if we look at the content, it'll just be that string that we had once I typed correctly. Okay, so that was the string that we pushed to the clipboard. Now, technically, you'd probably want to go to your other Python script and take that from the clipboard. And now I want to reconstitute this object. I've got this string here, which is really the series of steps that we went through to go from the object to pickling to base64 encoding, to converting to a string, and now we need to do the reverse process. Well, we just need to reverse everything that we did. So the last thing that we did was the decode. So we're going to take that, and we're going to reverse all that. So we're going to take our content, and we're going to encode it. So now we have that. So now we have, we're have we back to a byte string. What do we need to still do? Well, we did the base64 encode. Now we need to do a base64 decode. Right? So we're going to do the decode here of whatever that was. And then prior to that, we did this dump s. So now we need to do the reverse, which is load s. So we're going to reverse that and do load s on this. And this is now our, let's call it d new, right? This is going to be a dictionary object. It's going to be what we started off with, right? The type of d new is a dictionary. Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward way of using pickling and base64 encoding to be able to pass, you know, more complex objects 
from one script to another or from one application to another. But of course, you've got to have Python on both sides, right? Pickling is specific to Python. So let's go ahead and write a couple of utility functions that uh, we can use. Basically, we're just going to put all this back together, right? So we're going to say put object to clipboard and then we'll pass in the object. So this is really going to work for any object that can be pickled. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pickle the object. So let's go ahead and say pickle.dumps and we'll pickle the object. And then what do we need to do? Well, we need to push something to Piperclip. So we're going to say Piperclip copy and we're going to do the base64, b64 encode and we're going to encode the pickled and then we're going to call the decode on the byte string to transform that into the string. And that's it for that function. And then the other utility function is going to be the reverse. So we'll do get object from clipboard. And here we don't have to pass any arguments because it's going to get its content from the clipboard. So we'll say content equals and basically I'm going to go and copy all the stuff that I had so I don't have to retype. Um, we'll take this and then we're going to return what? Well, we're going to return the object and we know how to do that. We just did it here. And so we're going to return and we're going to return that like so. Okay. So that's it. So on the, you know, in the application that is pushing things to the clipboard, I would at least have this function on the receiving end on the application that's going to read from the clipboard. I would need this function. And this will work just fine with that dictionary as we just saw. We just went through those steps manually. Let's try it though with a custom class. Let's go ahead and say class person and we're going to do a def init and then we'll pass in let's say a name and an age for that person. We'll just say self.name equals name. We'll use a bare attribute for that and for the age. So self.age equals age. And let's go ahead and write also a wrapper. So a dunder wrapper method, just so we have a nice representation for this class. We're going to return. Uh, we'll just do an F string. It's going to be a person object with the name equal to self.name and the age equal to self.age. Let's fix my typos. Like so. So this is our class. And now we can go ahead and create a person object. So let's go ahead and say, let's say we have John and John is 42. And if we look at the representation now for P1, we get person named John H42. So now let's go ahead and test this put object to clipboard. So let's go ahead and put that object to clipboard. And that seemed to work fine. What do we have on the clipboard? So if we look at the clipboard, piperclip.paste, we have this string over here. Now let's go ahead and deserialize that using our get object from clipboard. So get object. I'm not going to copy paste that name because if I do that, get object from clipboard is going to end up on my clipboard. That's not what I want. I want to make sure that I still have this, uh, this person object that I just pushed. So let's go ahead and call that P2. And let's look now at the result. What is P2? And as you can see, it is a person object named John H42. So this is kind of a simple way of achieving that if you need to go beyond just text with the Piperclip library. But as I said, more often than not, I use the Piperclip library just pushing text so I can put it into you know, a markdown file, an Excel spreadsheet or what, or what have you. Of course, you can use JSON serialization. There's other things that you can do as well if you want to get you know, more fancy as well. And that's it. That's the Piperclip library. Very simple to use restricted to text only, but very simple to use and quite handy. Thanks.